The Unshackled Waves, episode 139. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now on The Unshackled, we normally keep our discussions to uh, politics and uh, current events. Uh, We don't normally talk about uh, entertainment or sport, but um, if you've been following the Australian news, obviously the uh, biggest uh, story this uh, past week has been the uh, Australian cricket team ball tampering scandal involving uh, test bowler Cameron Bancroft. Uh, Captain Steve Smith and Vice Captain David Warner, who is alleged to be the uh, mastermind of the the ball tampering plot. Uh, It was uh, premeditated and uh, to uh, illustrate the absurdity of the situation, uh, Cameron Bancroft, to avoid being caught, uh, put the uh, uh, sticky thing that he was using to tamper with the ball down his uh, trousers. So it's resulted in uh, uh, Warner and Smith uh, getting uh, 12 months uh, bans uh, from domestic and international uh, cricket and being stripped of their uh, leadership roles and Cameron Bancroft getting a nine month uh, ban. Uh, given that this has been a major talking point, we thought that uh, the, the Unshackled would add our opinion to it and who better to uh, talk about this with than uh, the Unshackled's uh, cricket expert, uh, editor at large, uh, Jacob Watts. Jacob, welcome back to the show and welcome to the new studio. Yeah, Tim, it looks looks terrific, I've got to say. Um, yeah, you've done a good job putting that together um, and uh, it's great. It's great to have um, such luxuries um, and it's definitely going to be a great acquisition to our show. The reason why I've invited you on the show today is because you're our resident uh, cricket expert. You uh, don't just follow the game, but you... Uh, play it yourself. Uh, uh, for me, I've well, I grew up with uh, uh, cricket. Uh, uh, I know the rules and I do follow it uh, s- somewhat. But uh, it's I haven't followed it much in recent years because of you know, the the bad culture that's uh, has been talked about this uh, past week. So, but I'd say both of us we probably know what we're talking about a lot more than the prime minister. Well, I personally think that the PM um, is in a bit of a bubble, doesn't know too much about um, sport in general, so I think that we are are probably in a better place to talk about it. Now, you talk about culture, and culture matters. Um, And what we've seen here is um, an instance of where, like, a bad culture has been allowed to fester, uh, metastasize, grow, um, and it's it, it it's caused you know a huge crisis having this bad culture. Um, it's caused a ball tampering crisis where you've got your world's number one batsman Steve Smith. You got David Warner, probably one of the most dynamic players in the world. Not only is his batting really valuable there, opening the batting, averaging in the mid forties, but You've also got to consider that he's he's a great fieldsman um, and um, it's just what he brings to the table is immense. And now you've also got the career of Cameron Bancroft, um, you know, being destroyed essentially from this. Uh, we, we, we may never see uh, Dave Warner come back and open. You know, I think that this might just spend him. You know, this might be the end of Warner. It might be a very p- p- premature end, but he, he was the leader of this. He was the leader of this ball tampering uh, incident. Um, and you've, you've got Steve Smith, um, who may not have known about everything about the incident, but certainly helped to cover it up. Steve Smith um, uh, helped Cameron Bancroft construct a lie that it was tape with granules of sand taken from the edge of the pitch instead of sandpaper. So, look, all parties here uh, are guilty. One, Warner being the ringleader. Two, Smith going along with the ride. And three, Bancroft uh, doing the dirty deed. So I think they 
deserve some kind of punishment and certainly the curator of culture, that being Darren Lehman, um, good, good old Buff, uh, knows his way around a, a buffet try, I tell you that much. He, he had to go. Um, Buff had to go, Buff Lehman. Uh, and look, uh, it was calamity, it was crisis, and um, all, all three press conferences, this is something that got me. I don't know if I'm just a, a very hard um, person, you know, I'm not soft enough, don't have enough of a heart, but they all cried in the press conferences, you know, crocodile tears or God knows what. Uh, I thought it was pretty pathetic. The whole thing was pretty pathetic. How it was handled from Cricket Australia, uh, giving these cricketers, uh, a, you know, a 12 and nine month bans respectively, uh, when they were catching the plane from Johannesburg, uh, to Sydney, Melbourne, what have you, was well, just a disgusting way to handle it. And and how Steve Smith, in the press conference, explained his actions and uh, didn't offer an apology, but he just spoke, uh, went through the incident, and then he comes to Australia, you know, this whole wishy-washy conference, feel sorry for me. Um, certainly huge. It's a big thing for Australian cricket. It's... Uh, you know, Australia's got a great reputation of, uh, you know, doing things by the book, being honest. Uh, it's a country of fair go. And certainly this this isn't uh, good for any of us. And, you know, I think in a, a circumstance like that, you need some punishment. Uh, but is 12 or 9 months too much? Um, obviously, this has uh, further repercussions to television rights as well. The television rights are supposedly going to go down from $1 billion dollars uh, or down to about seven hundred million. Uh, Smith, uh, Warner, uh, losing multi-million dollar IPL contracts as well. So certainly there are a lot of dominoes falling over here, Tim. Well, let's take it back to you know when uh, the ball tampering crisis started, which it broke in Australia on uh, Sunday, the twenty uh, fifth of uh, March, and. Uh, there was the press conference, initial press conference with uh, Cameron Bancroft and Steve Smith, where you know they confessed and said, "Oh, you know, we, you know, uh, uh, the the leadership group, you know, decided to to do this. Or you know, it probably wasn't very smart." Steve Smith said, uh, "Yeah, I haven't thought about uh, you know resigning the the captaincy." And on that Sunday, pretty much the you know Australian public exploded with rage it was you know you pack of sheets you know you should never wear the baggy green again it was really and and also i should add in the press conference by cricket australia ceo james sutherland was very you know uh mediocre like he said oh yeah well you know uh work through this and you know it was you know you, you talk a lot about you know social media lynch mobs but it was pretty much i think because i was checking the the comments uh on the day it was pretty much about like uh, you know, 90 to 10 in favor of, you know, we, you know, need to, you know, get, get rid of, get rid of these cheats. And, uh, the media, like the people have criticized the Australian media for going too hard, but they were only following the, uh, the, the public. And I think the reason why the public went in so hard is because it was a culmination of this bad culture that had been allowed to develop. Like the, you know, Australian people, they like, you know, winners like, okay, you know, we don't like the, you know, sledging and some of the, some of the carry on, but they're winners. But, you know, as soon as they're, you know, such a, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, just the usual like ball tampering, like we've seen other players, you know, bite the ball or spit a lolly. This was like a orchestrated, uh, you know, plot. It was premeditated. And I think that made the Australian public snap and said, you know, that's it. You know, we're not going to cop this anymore. Yeah, certainly, Tim. It's generally it's um, it's not the act of cheating itself that generally gets people in trouble. Uh, it tends to be the cover up, uh, the press conference, um, all these things. Are generally, you know, what does it? Uh, but the fact that it was um, premeditated as well, you know, it was premeditated cheating. Um, that's what, you know, Australians can't stand. You know, that's that doesn't fly. But faff, faff du plessis, um, let's remember this. 
I believe it was the Wacker Test match uh, in 2016. I probably am wrong here. Um, he had some Mintos in his mouth. Yeah, that's what was I was chewing, referring chewing, to. Yeah, chewing away and um, got away with it. And then the zipper incident. He scuffed the ball up with the zipper, um, got away with it. One match banned from the ICC. Then Sashin Tendulkar, he um, rubbed his fingers through the seam like that. Um, he, I think, maybe got some kind of reprimand from ICC. Uh, and then the biting incident you were talking about, uh, Shahid Afridi, I think in about 2009, uh, bit the ball, same thing, bit of reverse swing. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's not on. But in, in a way, um, I, I, I've, I was watching Alan Jones in co before, uh, and he is like uh, got a bit of contrarian nature. He thinks it's all over the top, all a bit of a blow up. You know, I disagree with Alan. Um, not really a fan of the show. Uh, it, it was on, um, it was on just Sky News, flicking through. But you know, he had Gideon Haig on as well. You know, he offered some some comment on that, like uh, a famous cricket writer. He basically was concurring uh, with you, Tim. It's it's a cultural cultural thing. Um, we've we've seen it play out. We've seen it play out across the board. Like this, this cultural problem's been going on for a long time. It's been going on uh, since David Warner punched Joe Root in the bar uh, in the UK in in I think that was 2013. So and um, you know all sorts of things like this. And then um, his wife you know, um, being brought into this. David Warner's wife uh, being brought into this with a rugby player and, uh, you know, Quint- Quinton de Kock, you know, bringing that up. And it's just been a very nasty series and, and um, something's got to give. And ultimately it was Darren Lehman, uh, it was Steve Smith and it was um, David Warner, I guess, bankrupt as well. But this this really was the Australian cricket team's um, iceberg, you know, the Australian cricket team was the Titanic, you know, and it was waiting to, to crash into this iceberg. It just had this momentum of poor culture and it was just going for this iceberg. It was being, it's, this has been, uh, you know, it's been bound to happen for the last 12 months or so. Um, this, um, you know, it's, it's vicious, but Bad culture, you know, creates, you know, vicious incidents, whether it's ball tampering, hitting a guy in the pub or belittling your lad's wife. Um, and this this is why the Cricket Australia board is discussing a sledging ban at the moment. Uh, but we'll just have to, to wait and see what comes of it, really. I felt that because the, the ICC, they gave uh, Smith and Bancroft, you know, one one test bans. It felt like the, the Cricket Australia because, uh, you know, people are saying, well, you know, why, why did they get a year from Cricket Australia, Smith and Bancroft Warner. didn't even get a ban, Tim. He um he got a 75% match oh, yes, fee taken. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so people are saying, well, why they you know, disproportionate punishment. But it feels like that, you know, Cricket Australia, they decided to, you know, punish, um, you know, all, all three, you know, for... You know, they're, they're serving, you know, the rest of it, you know, for the for the culture, you know, where we're giving you the ban for the ball tampering, but the rest is, you know, because we want to send a message uh, uh, about this culture. And it's funny that you mention uh, Alan Jones saying, oh, it's been blown out of a, rep- a proportion. I remember uh, Alan Jones on the, the Monday after it happened saying, you know, oh, what a crisis this was. And uh, this is what's uh, annoyed me that, you know, all the media was, you know, all in, you know, we need to, you know, really punish them. But then, you know, after Cricket Australia, you know, had the, had the bans and then they had the, you know, Thierry press conferences, it's like, oh, you know, it's so over the top. It's like, ma- make up your mind. Like, Cricket Australia, they only, you know, react to you know the public outrage but you know as soon as like cricket australia you know put, put out you know what the public expects it's like oh we didn't mean that it's like are you just wanting to continue to be outraged about this i think it's a bit like the um the terrible two-year-old crying and and really just like bawling their eyes out uh wanting um some peanut butter in the cupboard and 
what I think it, what what happened is they got the peanut butter. Mum came home with the shopping. The peanut butter was there, but mum, it's not crunchy peanut butter. It's not what I wanted. But you know they've got what they've wanted. But you know it wasn't exactly how they wanted it. Now, you know you have a ban or you don't have a ban. Um, you can't you can't have your cake and eat it. Now they've um, committed the crime. Um, they should do the time and. Um, I think it's interesting, but it was. I think it was uh, uh, weirdly uh, placed in in um, the space time continuum. This whole saga because it happened around Easter time, and um, Dave Pallel of uh, formerly of Church and State, you know, a great bloke, uh, has got a lot of great stuff to say. Um, he 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 compared it to say, is it is it some kind of crucifixion? You know, have have the public just given up their, uh, I guess their Messiah Steve Smith, um, I guess as a scapegoat uh, for for some of the issues that have occurred. So it, it's very interesting, and it was a very timely uh, thing to, to 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 happen and and uh, for it to happen. Sorry, and and it, I guess that just reminds us all um, of. Um, of, of what can happen, you know, of really what can happen is, I guess, um, someone's loyalty or someone's love for their cricket team can can uh, really be bought over with um, 30 pieces of silver. So, um, interesting. Yeah, is that going to be the Australian Easter message from now on? The, the Australian cricket captain, you know, crucified... Uh, at Easter, due to the you know the sins of the Australian cricket culture, then you know resurrected uh, in twelve months' uh, t- uh, time of when it, when it's Easter again. But would then that that would probably make uh, uh, David Warner Judas in this because you know he was the you know ringleader in this uh, plot. And also, you know, he has, you know, been the, you know, embodiment of what is, you know, being the bad culture. I mean, he's never really apologized for his sledging. There was the, uh, the, the confrontation in the, in the dressing room when, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how do you say his name again? Quentin and De Clock? De Cock. De Cock. Uh, had that sledge uh, against his, uh, wife, which he, uh, reacted to and like, yeah, like, the the thing is in professional sports is you know like and like the South African crowds they you know taunted David Warner about his uh, you know wife but you've got to maintain you know professionalism but yeah David Warner I mean he was the the last to uh, apologize in this he's also considering legal action and it's broken tonight that uh, he is also considering a tell all interview for a million dollars. So, you know, he's still, it doesn't seem like the, the pennies drop for him like it has the other two. I think that um, having played local sport myself, um, and maybe being one of those guys myself, one of those David Warner types, now you can be the, um, the knight in shining armour or you want to be the knight in shining armour for your team. You, you might, you, for, for instance, I was playing a, a semi-final game um, and there was an illegal player playing for the other side. You know, I pulled it up. You know, I always be the one to dig into the, to the other team to sledge a bit hard. And I think sometimes people forget who they are, what they're about, and they put the team first so much that they actually forget what the team's about. Um, team isn't the team. The team... Um, isn't the, just the Australian cricket team. It's not an institution. It should be a bunch of mates who get on really well, who love what they're doing, um, and they should be playing for their nation. Uh, and playing for their nation sometimes means uh, losing admirably. It means losing with grace, with conviction. It, it shouldn't mean... Um, shouldn't mean doing what David Warner's been doing, you know. I really think that there's some part of a bit of fun sledging in the game, like, um, you know, like uh, like uh, Glenn McGrath asks, but it cannot turn very nasty, like Glenn McGrath asked Edo Barnes, a South African batsman, he asked him, why are you so fat? And um, Edo Barnes said to McGrath, because 
Um, every time I make love to your wife, she gives me a biscuit. Yeah. And I just reckon that that kind of stuff, if you're bringing people's wives into it, that's really overstepping the mark. Um, you shouldn't bring a man's wife or a man's sister or a man's family into the game. It should be lighthearted, fun sledging. Like, um, like a fella said to um, David Richards once, he said to him, mate, you keep missing the ball. You know, it's, uh, it's red and it's round, it's five and a half ounces. And then the next ball, I think this was uh, Merv Hughes, whacks him, whacks him way into the stands. And he says to Merv, now you know what it looks like, mate, go find it. So you see that's more of an example of a good, nice, uh, light-hearted sledge, whereas if you bring your man's wife into it, it's bound to, to always end poorly, and it's just a, a, a bad instance, uh, a, well, a prime example of, of bad culture. Um, I think this bad culture has been brewing probably since the 90s, though, uh, when the game got very cold, hard, and clinical. Um, and I think you're seeing bad culture across the board, but if these bands can make the Australian cricket team a shining a city on a hill, then I have no problem with it. I think they are just. Um, but, yeah, I would have liked to see investigation taken beforehand, a full, proper and conclusive investigation. But it is what it is. We have to live with it now and we must move on. Yeah, I think the, you know, the cleansing, you know, stage of the, the cricket culture has, you know, uh, begun. I mean, you know, Steve Smith's, you know, pr press conference and, you know, Cameron Bancroft's, you know, they, they both conceded, you know, this is going to, you know, haunt us for the, for the rest of our lives. And, you know, we do want to, you know, make amends. And then, you know, hours later, uh, Darren Lehman, you know, d despite 24 hours uh, before saying that, you know, he wouldn't be resigning, uh, said, you know, I'll resign at the the end of this, you know, test series. And I think, you know, Australia, Australian cricket, you know, will, you know, bounce back from this and it will be, you know, better. And it will encourage people like me to, you know, follow the Australian cricket team, you know, again with pride, pride that I'm, you know, supporting a team which, you know, plays fair, you know, is full of, you know, honourable people, proud to wear the, you know, a baggy green and we can, you know, go back to, you know, what, you know, cricket used to be, a gentleman's game. Well, maybe, Tim, if um, uh, Peter Dutton gets his way and we get some uh, white South African farmers coming through, we might uh, we might have that. We might have a better cricket team. We can poach a few like the English have been doing. Well, the other thing I was going to say with regard to the, the Australian cricket team's tour of South Africa is that uh, South Africa, it sure knows how to screw over a group of white guys. Yeah, well, I'm... Um, I'm thinking that, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, South Africa could cascade into some form of uh, turmoil. So um, I think it's very serious. So uh, let's enjoy the cricket uh, that's being played at these beautiful venues um, when white people are allowed to sit in them. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure, like, you know, people have been saying these punishments are severe. I'm pretty sure that, you know, nobody from the Australian cricket team into the future is going to try and cheat. And I think it was also going to have a knock-on effect in other Australian, you know, sports, like, you know, AFL, you know, NRL, all the other codes. Like, you know, Cricket Australia has set the, the you know, example. If you, you know, try to cheat, you know, we're going to come down hard on you and you know not just you know we're going to ban you but you know your reputation will be in tatters as well well look what happened to um greg chapel after the underarm incident in 1981 he was completely wrote off um you know likewise um well lance armstrong james hurd um, people that we invested a great deal of trust in, uh, a lot of people had a great deal of pride in uh, in the Essendon Footy Club, James Hurd, and a lot of people had a lot of pride in Lance Armstrong and overcoming cancer, like seriously, like still, him overcoming cancer and winning the Tour de France, even with EPO, was incredible, but uh, a lot of people lost respect for him after that. Um, 
I think it could be similar for Steve Smith. And it certainly will be similar for David Warner if he pursues legal action. I tell you that much. Um, but 60 minutes with, uh, with Dave Warner and a tell-all interview would be very interesting, I tell you that much, Tim. Um, yeah. Oh, it's certainly going to be uh, an interesting 12 months for, for cricket. I hope that uh, it, it can recover. But uh, thanks for, for joining me, Jacob, today. It's not normally uh, a, a sport is a topic we explore on The Unshackled, but given it's been a major news story in Australia this past week, I thought it would be worth uh, us having our two cents worth. Yeah, yeah, Tim. I, I think certainly it's a, a good thing to talk about. Uh, certainly it's a great passion of mine, but um, it's obviously with deep regret that I have to talk about this. Um, it, it, it does hit um, pretty close to home. Um, the Australian cricket team um, is probably one of the most uh, important things in my life is following them, is playing cricket, and to see our boys cheat is very hard for me. So, um, but yeah, thanks to thanks to um, you know uh, coming up with the idea to actually talk about this team, and I'm I'm uh, really really happy to see the new studio, and um, I hope hopefully our uh, our viewers uh, appreciate it, um, and don't forget to let us know what you think about this whole saga as well. Um, obviously, uh, I, I'm a cricket tragic. Tim's, um, Tim's a casual viewer, but, you know, we, we'd love to hear, like, what, what do you reckon should happen to them? Do you reckon they should get the ban, or do you think that setting some kind of example is, is good? You know, I'd, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. I'd like to remind uh, all our viewers and listeners about uh, the other upcoming events that the Unshackled will be uh, present at and be reporting from. There is the Justice for Jalal rally. Uh, Jalal was a 13-year-old boy who was hit and killed by an unlicensed African driver who only received 80 hours community service. The rally will be on Sunday the 15th of April at 1pm at Victoria's Parliament House. Then there is also the Rally Against Safe Schools on Saturday the 21st of April, also at 1pm at Victoria's Parliament House. It is uh, being held to coincide with the National Sex Ed Sit-Out, which is on Monday the 23rd uh, of April, to take a stand against uh, safe schools and other uh, programs mandated by government that sexualise our children. So I hope you can join us for both of those in the Melbourne area as uh, people on the right need to uh, get out onto the streets and uh, make their voice heard to the politicians for them to take notice. Also, don't forget, if you want to take the Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider coming a patron at patreon.com slash the Unshackled. And don't forget, we have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. Thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.